All right, good morning from the Tortured Poets Department. Oh my gosh, everyone's going crazy with Taylor oh, yeah. Swift's new I've, album. I've heard a few songs and yeah. not too bad. I heard a few, yeah, I heard a few and they're not mm -hmm. too bad. So I'm sure it'll be blasting at my house <laughs> this evening with my 12 year old Swifty at home. So. Oh yeah, Blast, <laughs> blasting in a lot of households, <laughs> I, as I can imagine. Yeah. All right, so. Um, you have a pet. I have a pet. We have yeah, dogs. Yes. And, um, so evidently, vet costs are skyrocketing. Like everything else. Yeah. Like everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, seven, the 7.9% 7 rise in price of urban veterinarian services, it has gone up in a year. So from last year to this, it's gone up like 7.9%. Yeah, it's more than two and a half times like what it was. Um, and a lot of the, some of the factors that are making it more expensive mm -hmm. is like medication and then mm -hmm. um, the technologies, the advancement of technologies and tests that they're using along with increasing corporate consolidation um, and the growing presence in the industry. So, you know, and there's also this shortage evidently yeah. of veterinarians and so the increased demand because of the pandemic, you know, a yeah. lot of people got dogs yeah. and whatnot. 91% um, of pet owners have endured some level of financial stress because of pet care costs. Mm -hmm. I mean, even dog food, Yeah. you know. Oh, dog food is expensive too. Uh, it's unbelievable. The tough thing about pets is that you never, you can't, they can't speak to you. So you don't know if, if it's, if, if their sickness warrants going to the vet. Yeah. And if you take them to the vet and nothing's wrong, then you're you spend all that money for nothing. My dog's famous for that. Oh no! Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that is a good point. You don't know, and then you take them, and then you still have to exactly. pay for the visit. So. We love them, though. Of course. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't be paying <laughs> this money for them, right? That's so true. We would not be paying for them. Okay, we were talking about this actually in the morning show. So bumblebees can survive underwater for up to a week. It's very interesting. Yeah, so they're not really quite sure mm -hmm. why. One of it is one 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 explanation I think is they can through their their bodies, yeah. like they can breathe through their bodies. But it's kind of an or they're like either hibernating. They might think that's kind of the mm -hmm. what their their bodies are doing as they're underwater. But that's interesting. It is, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm not a biologist, so I can't really right. comment on what it would be. But you never would guess that and. Correct me if I'm wrong. Can you freeze bees and they come back? Oh, I don't know. Is that a I know myth? I think. I, I don't think. You is it a, no, you can't. Unless they're frozen, that's it. All right. Well, yeah. Josh says well, no. Well, fish, you can. Don't, overwinter don't do fish. Well, fish hibernate. freeze. Yeah. Like yeah. In yeah. The, in when they're frozen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some frogs, yeah, they can freeze and they come back. Okay, yeah. you can freeze frogs, not bees. <laughs> I guess because they're in the ponds, today. and then they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. okay. This now take a. This is hysterical. So this is like this growing social media movement in China where people are dressing really, really bad and and going to work, just mm -hmm. looking ridiculous. And it's been just taking a firestorm, if you will, of young people doing this. Like, it just looks hilarious to me. Yeah. Now, why are they doing this? So <laughs> there's some like there's they think it's because they're dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. This generation is dissatisfied with their jobs, the lot their pay. So they're just kind of making a mockery of themselves in a way and just going to work. Mm. That wouldn't fly here. Yeah, I'm not going to come into work in my PJs. I don't think. No. Maybe I'll try it out. See. Yeah, but it just kind of looked hilarious, like some of the yeah. outfits, like, I mean, look at that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's a thing, evidently. Apparently. Yeah, I had not seen this. So. Yeah. Interesting. Thing in China. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Let's take a look at our local headlines on this Friday morning. Charlottesville police say the suspect in a shooting earlier this week has surrendered. Corinthian Zaquan Brown turned himself in yesterday afternoon. Now, a warrant was issued for his arrest after a shooting Tuesday 
evening, one person was wounded. This was at the intersection of Cherry Avenue and Ridge Street. They are expected to survive the victim. Plans to build hundreds of apartments near the University of Virginia are one step closer to becoming a reality. The city met yesterday to discuss Verb Charlottesville. It will be located at the intersection of Jefferson Park Avenue and Stadium Road. It will feature more than 400 units. City Council approved the rezoning for this project. Now the development has to get through the site plan process before breaking ground. If everything goes as planned, construction for Verb will begin in October and be complete in the fall of 2027. Schools in Virginia will be able to directly pay athletes for their name, image, and likeness deals thanks to a first-of-its-kind law signed by Governor Glenn Youngkin that might spark change for other states. House Bill 1505 protects athletes and allows Virginia institutions to create and negotiate NIL opportunities. The law is also the first in any state to make it illegal for the NCAA to punish a school for compensating athletes for their NIL rights. And if you're looking for something fun to do tonight, head on out to Friday's After Five at Team Pavilion in downtown Charlottesville. We've got the Falsies and Theocles hitting the stage at 5.30 and then at 6.30. No BS Brass Band will take the stage. 29 News, of course, is a proud sponsor of Friday's After Five. All right, let's get a check on that weather now. Josh joins us. You know, last Friday we had gusty winds. Oh, yes. We, we, we had sure winds in excess of 40 and 50 miles an hour, which wreaked havoc in the area. Now, mm -hmm. today, less wind, but lots of clouds, and uh, there's this chance for a passing shower. In fact, the radar picture is showing us a band of rain across West Virginia. Now, some of that will try to head our way this afternoon and this evening, but little of that will make it over the mountains. I'm just expecting barely a sprinkle or a ground dampening shower, nothing severe. So, our higher res weather tracker shows lots of gray gloomy sky is today nowhere near the 80s we had yesterday so here's five o'clock for Friday is after five it'll be mostly cloudy slight shower chance and the wind will be light from the east now overnight and pre-dawn stop the clock five to seven a.m. that's the window of our opportunity to get our best chance for a passing shower or downpour and then after eight it's long gone sunshine makes a comeback and the wind will turn gusty for tomorrow so today it's still mild despite the clouds high is more seasonable upper 60s low 70s tonight mostly cloudy skies the best chance of rain is pre-dawn and then your forecast on saturday calls for sunshine with a northwest wind high seasonable in the upper 60s and the lower 70s and that forecast for the next seven calls for a cloudier day Sunday, but mainly dry. And it's mostly a dry forecast as we go into next week. A mostly dry cold front on Wednesday will knock our temperatures back down. So there's really no relief either from the sky high levels of tree and grass pollen. I'm sure you've noticed the the fallout, all that green dust on your vehicle. That is a lot of the pollen. Oh, yes. I went to the car wash this week and then today. My car was covered back in the green. Yeah, I don't don't spend a whole lot getting your car cleaned just yet. Yeah, but a, a bit of a cool down last week. I mean, mm -hmm. the beginning of this week we were over we 90. We had a record high of 92 before those severe storms hit on Monday. Yeah. Yesterday we hit the upper 80s. We should normally be in the low 70s, and that's where we'll be today and tomorrow. All right, thank you, yeah. Josh, and thank you guys for joining us on this Friday morning. Have a good day. We'll see you again on 29 News at noon. We're always live, of course, on 29news.com.